the one that's underneath us? Uh, probably the underneath us that had more options, I okay. think. Backing up. Beep, beep, beep. Right here? Yes. Oh, speaking of the devil. Yeah. What's that? Look at oh, that. Yeah. Is that another one? I think that is one. Malia, while we were at dinner, they found a fossilized beef whale bone. This seems to be a fossilized beef yeah. whale bone. Looks like there's ah. one right there, too. Ah, oh, what a perfect place to pick a rock. How about this round? Do you want rounds? You really well, don't want rounds. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me survey. Sorry. She's, I need she's processing. Yes, I'm processing. <laughs> Do you want to zoom? Um. Yeah, I'm looking over here. I'm thinking like that looks attached. This looks that one looks okay. I you see this looks round, but who knows yeah, what it, it actually? Be, yeah. yeah, maybe it's been rounded by the yeah, quarry. Good exactly. Point. So that's again thinking my thinking out loud. I would definitely look try to grab any of these. Any of those. Four, I think. No, three. Because I think that, that is attached. That looks attached, yeah. USBL is not ready. Oh, yeah, it's freaking out. Oh. Are we looking at some black tree whittle? Texture in the back? Yeah. 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 You're yeah. right. Uh, I forget. Oh, okay. over here. Just yeah. like any of those three. I think the one on top might be too round, but I can't tell until like we one. rotate it. No, 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 this one. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh. Not again. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Is selected in. Wow. Wow. That okay. Looks loose. Okay. Uh, what about like that? Yeah, I, yeah, I was I looking at this. I'm about to get pulled away. I, yeah. Um, you do have a good amount of the summit still to work with if we move. Yeah, we can move on. Move on. Yes, that's fine. Eastward. Eastward. Eastward bound. And down. My whale bone. Still so excited about it. Malia, what's Hawaiian for whale? It depends what kind. The humpback is um, oh, so kohola. 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 And then the sperm is palaua. Palaua? Palaua. Like the island? Uh, no, like palaua. Palaua. <laughs> spelled like it's spelled. That's how you say it. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, with my spelling record, I'm sure I just butchered oh, no, the spelling. I spelled it P-A-U-L-A-U-L-A. -L -A -L -A. So here's the spelling, P-A-L-A-O-A. -A -A. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's way off. Palawa. <laughs> yeah, but if you, if you write it so you were able to pronounce it, that's, I mean, because it is an oral language and, and was only written down later, you know, if you write it the way you can then pronounce it, that's kind of accurate. Kind of. <laughs> but then you only, have, cer you only right. have certain amount of um, letters yeah. as opposed to the U.S. Um, yeah. English language, yeah. If oh. you're doing it phonetically in yeah. the English form. Yeah. Oh, oh, thank uh -huh. you, Tina. She says it's you pronounce pilava as chihuahua. Does that help? Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Just Palau. So, um. Palau. 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 So the O and the A, the last two, they kind of run into each other. Okay. 
Kolawa. Wait, let me check if that was a sperm whale or the, let me check on that. I want to make sure I'm giving you accurate information. We, we don't know what, well, actually, do we know what type of whale that was? Probably beaked. Yeah. Seeing two so close together. Yeah. Does that tell us anything about, like, the seamount or anything? The feeding ground or something? Or a whaling ground. Yeah. What about this stuff in here? It looks so flat. Okay. From here, but again, it could be yeah. totally different up close. I can't. I like. I can't tell. Then that's a big sponge right there too. Can we plan to maybe set down over here? Is that enough time? Yeah. So Palawa is a sperm whale. Palawa. Great. Is there a name for beak whales? Not that I know of. Yeah. I'll have to look that one up. Now, if I'm asking, I don't I know if they're deep ocean, uh, like deep water whales, right? So they wouldn't have been along the coastal. Well, do they, they come do close into coasts? They coastal do, areas? They're very common to, sh to wash up in Hawaii as um, strands. Uh huh. Um, because they're Hawaii's in the middle of the ocean. You're more kind of centered in the middle of their general habitat. So they get a lot of them washing up on shore. It's the best way to study them is in Hawaii. All right, let's take a look at these. They're all look attached. I know. Yeah, they do. Uh, yeah, this one? That looks attached. Well, maybe. It also looks no. massive. No, that one's not attached. That's a cool flat rock. Yeah. Mm. I think this one looks good. If I would be surprised if it's not attached. I would be surprised. That doesn't look attached. That doesn't. But I can't tell how big it is, so we would have to try it. Looks to like grab ten it. it's like ten centimeters. Point. Do you want me to poke or find a spot? I guess try this one first. That's not attached. I don't know what rock that is. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, oh, this one. It's that one. Okay, okay. If this is not attached, I'll be shocked. All right, it's looking pretty solid. Oh, yeah. All right, can we try this one here? Reach Herc. I feel like you guys are at ice shop. Can we try this one? <laughs> yeah. 50 cents well, for another this try with the claw. Still came in. It looks like there's a shadow underneath it. So close yet so far. I'm trying to hit any right. of them on the way back. <laughs> See if. <laughs> yeah. This All right. I mean, it, it is fairly important that we get one up here because it's the summit. Uh, but we can try another spot, I guess. Right. It does seem to me that when one's attached, they're all attached. Yeah, try this one. See, just see what, what happens. Because I can't see. No. Wow, okay. Thank you. Also, backstep the ship if you like. Um, or we could just look in the immediate vicinity first. Yeah, let's look at this vicinity. Maybe back Herc up a little bit towards Atalanta a bit and see what we find in that direction.
What about like in here? Yeah, that could work. Yeah, yeah I was looking like in this channel too. Let's give this a try. They yeah. look more spaced out. And even up here. Loose. They just look massive. Well, look, that's 10 centimeters. Okay. Oh my hey. god! Yay! Little jiggle. <laughs> Puhaku. 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 Yes. Oh wow! Oh, <laughs> oh my. Oh, drop it. Oh, not that again. Where'd it go? It wasn't as good as the last one you dropped, but it was still a good rock. That was so funny. I think that's it. It's here. Nope. Oh my gosh, wait. Right there? <laughs> it's the yeah. loose one. Yeah. <laughs> hey! Thank you. Coming in. Yeah, you're coming home. <laughs> you're coming home with me. Wow, you can really see the crest on that, oh, yeah? yeah? Wait, uh, go a little bit further around. Yeah, you can see that yeah. it's... You can see the edge. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's a thick crust. You're coming home it's with been me. been there a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Can we possibly get the lasers on it? Sorry. Almost there. Thank you, Puhaku. It's okay if it's partially on the claws. I can get estimation from there. There we go. Thank you. I know I haven't used this word for a rock yet, but kupai. Where do you want to put it? Let's put it in D. Starboard D. Delta. All right. Camera. So cameras, box out. Team uh, Brown. Sample. Hmm. Sample 87. Patrioidal. Mm-hmm. Is, is the rock patrioidal? Patrioidal? I couldn't tell. I just put angular. Yes. B said. Which part? Where? D. D. Delta? Yep. Yeah, Delta. That, it's the forward one. Right? Mm -hmm. Uh, aft, I think. It's aft. A, B, C, D. Sample collected. Sample 87. 87. Nice. I think Kupai and Naha is appropriate. Yeah. Kupai and Naha. Kupai and Naha. Amazing Pohaku. 
Yes. yes. All right, we can uh, continue on when Nav and Data are ready to uh, waypoint seven. I'm ready whenever. Are there nine waypoints? Yes. The timetable seems a little off. Well, we'll keep going then. That's just that was just the the dive track plan. There's plenty to look at if we need more time. You're still shooting for recovery at uh, 0400 tomorrow? Yep. We can always go back down the canyon if we have time. No. No. Well, because then you're going downhill the whole time and you can't see anything. You don't want to see the six stills? Speaking of which, how do you want to go downhill right now? Well, you're going to have to go a little downhill, yeah. You guys want to back down it? Mm. Which direction are we going? We're going southeast. Like this. Um. So the other thing we could do is walk it down the saddle and then over. I'm not sure it's going to make a big difference. Less steep. If you want to do that, we could head like more like one, like 200. 190. Uh, and go over. Might be easier. Let's see. Let's see what the terrain looks like. Huh, I'm looking at the sky in one of the cameras, and it's Kupayanaha. <laughs> Kupayanaha. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, it's beautiful. We've been so lucky with the weather. We've been really lucky and with the, the weather. And the ocean conditions. Just, yeah. Go straight forward and straight but sideways. Okay. That's a really cool looking pohaku up there. Mm-hmm. The, like, big mm -hmm. round. I would want that home too. I would take that one home. Bridge nap. I would put it on display somewhere and be like, look at this beautiful rock. That was pretty common in like traditional Hawaiian households. <gasps> we would have, we would build ahu, which were stone altars <gasps> and oftentimes have a beautiful like elongated pohaku. <gasps> um, so pohaku are like just integral to Hawaiian culture. Oh yeah, I would, I would put that beautiful pohaku right like I don't even know where everybody would see it and they'd be like, wow, what a great rock that is. Where did you get it from? And then I would have to tell them a wonderful <laughs> story. <laughs> the story of the Pohaku, especially if I got an age from it. Yeah, that'd be so much fun. Also now, like granite countertops just like fascinate oh, me now. Yeah. Like they just fascinate me. I'm like, this is beautiful. I'm like, bio So you could say that you took them <laughs> for granite far. before? Yeah, I took them for granite. <laughs> oh. <laughs> not, Edwin Sebastian. Mike, you're that's not the a, only one with puns. That's the type of joke I would have come up with. That's way <laughs> not the only one puns. In New Hampshire, we hear that like every other day. <laughs> <laughs> don't take New Hampshire for granite. <laughs> <laughs> also, don't take New Hampshire's granite. Yeah. That's our... We're the granite state, so it's our motto. I thought it was live free. Oh, I love that. Well, live free or die is on the license plate. Live free or die, granite. <laughs> That's it. Again, low bait flows. Fantastic. Kupayanaha, low bait flows. They'll be Kupayanaha after battery idle. Oh my gosh. See, now you're just going to keep saying it just to rub me the wrong way. Fine. Do you have a preferred word then? Preferred alternative? Rock. Rock? Can I just say like poofy look? Is that appropriate terminology? That's fine. It's fine? Yes. <laughs> poofy? 
Yes. Almost rectangular right. right there. Oh, wow. Is, is that just a rock? I guess so. I think there's a hen coral hiding between the rocks right there. And can we get a zoom in on this guy? On the rock? Yes. I'm not surprised there's a coral at the peak. Yeah, there's there's a couple. There's currents up here. Mm -hmm. This is what, probably the most bright one. This is a Bubble paragorgia. Bubblegum. Yes. Paragorgias. Bubble yes. bubble. With some brittle stars? Yeah. With a brittle star. Yeah, I only see one. And coming out. Thank you. And then there's the Anthemasis hiding behind that little bump right there. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised you didn't say poof. <laughs> behind the poof? Yeah, behind the poof. Do we prefer poof or floof? I think poof. It's interesting sonar image right now on an Atalanta. So, Tori, I think you guys are setting a world record for the number of interactions you have scheduled today. Uh, I think those are some PC pens in the sediment right there. Yes. Oh, yeah. Like 17, maybe? Is that too? Yeah. That's a like crest of origin, I think. Some busy days, but they're so much fun. I love doing them. Anemone. I think Kara's in there now, getting ready to start another What's this? one. Is that a sea star tucked underneath the rock? Is that a sea star? Rock? Can we get a zoom on that? I think it's a mushroom coral. Now that you're getting closer, I think you're right. Over zoom. Go on in. Oh, oh, come oh, out. Yeah. Balancing on the back legs. Looks like an anthemasis, but there's something sticking out okay. underneath it. Go on in. <laughs> oh, man, wrong way. It's an anthemasis and a yeah, paragorgia really. in a very weird position. Yeah, that is weird. Strange. Coming out. It's kind of strange to see a coral tucked away like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like it doesn't get that much flow right there. Is it possible that the rock fell down the cliff, maybe? It's no. possible. Not recently. It's pretty Not recent. Cemented. Hmm. No. But I just can't imagine it getting much flow right there. Well, it must be doing something right. Guess so.
So, we're, we're not going to be on the stream tomorrow, right? At 4 a.m.? Mm. We're not what? We're like, we're not going to be on the stream, like, at 4 a.m.? No, no, but we, we have to be up covering. for... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, so... Just, just making sure. Yeah, we're not going to be in the van. Yes. Because okay. we'll be on deck by then. Okay. Or on the surface, at least. Um, I'm going to get up just to make sure things are in progress and then stop being up. And we'll do cultural protocol as well, so yeah. you guys are all welcome to join yep, in that. For sure. This looks like sheet lava. Sheet lava? Um, I wouldn't say that yet. I still think low bait. Look at this. <laughs> it's sheetier and this? than it was. Is that maybe just like one flow that was on top of another flow? Yeah, maybe it's sheet flow over a low bait flow. I can't prove that, so maybe I can't the chances not affirm zero. or deny. I'm just saying to me, it looks like a low bait flow. Okay. But it does look like there was a flow that it was on top of right here. Yeah. So it could, it could be. <laughs> Again, I can't, can't prove or disprove. I can't prove or disprove it. It's conjecture. It's a hypothesis. Yes. It's a currently unprovable hypothesis. I feel like that's a lot of what I say. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see, you're making observations. Yes. Without, you know, a lot of this, you know, we're throwing out what we think on first impressions. It's not like perfectly well informed, studied. No. You know, it's it's live reaction. So. And it's crazy too because like you think about the. the people like geologists that work on stuff that they can actually like a lot of our stuff is like we we go and we touch it and like yeah. we yeah. hold it and we look at it and like taking away like feeling yeah. some of the stuff is like crazy so i'm really just going off of uh, yeah observations via eyesight <laughs> right That would be kind of cool to think about just thinking like because we teach this practice of kilo where you use all of your senses so your observation is not just a visual observation but you're using all your other senses mm -hmm. i'm curious if that could be you know something like you touch a rock you hear the rock you could even tap it yes. because then there could be a hollowness to it there could mm -hmm. be a density you know you feel it so you have mm -hmm. your tactile mm -hmm. right you could smell it right to mm -hmm. smell you know so i'm just curious that might be a really cool way to to study pohaku yeah val is agreeing with geology absolutely uses all five senses i like we're only using the sight right now which is oh yeah val we lick rocks sometimes yeah that is true <laughs> that's true yeah that makes sense Let's see Poohy. Yep, Poohy. And our bamboo and the Walteria. It is interesting looking at like this coloration right here. Is that darker color like? I have no idea. I was just another observation that yeah. I'm like, what? Because the surrounding looks different. Could there be like a higher concentration of ferromanganese crust on like one part of a rock versus another part? Yeah, it, it really depends on like what's being exposed, what part of the rock is. Because on one side you can have it really, like what we've noticed looking at these rocks, one side you can have like a thicker manganese crust than the other side where it could just be to the shape of the rock.
What's that? A dead sponge? Oh, yeah, dead, dead yeah sponge. it was a dead sponge. I thought it might have been a beach whale again. Is that a really tall sponge in the back? <laughs> yeah, in the back. I believe that's a tall Walteria sponge. Val said, don't lick the ferro manganese. <laughs> Please, yeah, don't do that. Is it dangerous? Yes. It's toxic. Yes. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I have a pohaku in my office that is crusted with ferro manganese. Just don't lick it. Well, just don't well, lick it, and when you touch off, it, and I, yes, just like wash your hands. Yeah. That's it. Oh, heck. I wish somebody had warned me about this <laughs> before the I didn't know office. either until <laughs> this trip. And I was working with them like. Val's saying it's fine, just don't lick it. Yeah. What, oh, um, my. <laughs> what, what is, what's the uh, hazardous part? Is the manganese? There's like toxic metals inside. There's various ones. But not the iron or the manganese. It's like other ones that are in there? Yeah, there's there other ones. They're like rare earth elements. Got it. Mm. Cool. Heavy metals. Heavy metals. Yeah. Thanks, Val. <laughs> we will avoid touching with tongues. I'm so glad I didn't let the kids touch it. <laughs> Yeah, because oh kids lick it and will lick it anything instantly. Yeah. By economic value, not so tasty. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. I mean, it might be tasty, just dangerous. Well, I'm not going to try it. Um, I mean, if you like the taste of metal. Mm. Tastes like change. Just like sucking on pennies when you're a kid, yeah. huh? Ew. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do that. Definitely. The yeah, amount of germs. That's a way to get. That's something germs people and heavy did. Metal. Some people that's do that disgusting. as a kid. And I'm like, I don't understand. Ooh. I just like if I change my pocket, my hand, my hands would ooh, smell ooh, like ooh, metal. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I don't even want to think about it. I think we should just abolish change. We really don't use it anymore. I yeah. agree with that statement. Like maybe keep quarters, <laughs> but the rest of it can go. Or or. Do it in like Canada, where your change can be like, you know, a one dollar coin, a two dollar coin, something useful. Yeah. Well, they still love the other coins, don't they? No, they got rid of the penny. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, we should get rid of pennies. We should definitely get rid of pennies. There's no reason. We, we can should. round everything this is so to funny. the nearest That five copper cents. could be so much better used. I don't think they're copper anymore. Well, I think it's also copper plated, though. It's probably spray paint. <laughs> I think they cost I've more than a penny to make. Rid of definitely. Change. Why? It's so useless. I don't know. I just never, never If thought. I ever pay for something in cash, which is extremely rare, I will... I, I hate getting cha uh, coin change back. I was like, ugh. There's yeah, what a, are we going to um, do with this? A $5 bill that my buddy Dave and I, he relieves me and I relieve him. We just switch back and forth. We've been handing it back and forth to one another since March. <laughs> just can't get rid of it. You guys remember the $2 bill? Yep. Yeah. Like, there's a $2 bill. Yeah. It's crazy. I, I there were one. several of them. I like those. My dad sent me one. It was a useful. I have like one somewhere in my room. There's a lot of stuff that's like $1.98. <laughs> <laughs> or it used to be anyway, I guess. So still get two pennies back then. Yeah, that's not good. I'd just say keep the change. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, why do I have to carry metal around? Sea star. <laughs> Something else. I don't Pretty know what it is. It's an enemy, I think. An enemy. I took a ancient numismatics class at, in college on Roman coins. Oh, yeah. They, they started out with, like, they would have, like, this, like, a rectangular block of, uh, of metal, and they would, like, cut off a piece or break off a piece. It was, like, uh, tabulated. They'd break off a piece and use it to, ch and then eventually it became, you just hand around those tabs rather than breaking them off. And then eventually the emperors started stamping their likeness on them and dating them, and that's when they became, um, you know, coins. There's a society in the South Pacific somewhere, maybe millionaires, where they have these giant rocks that are their, in effect, mm -hmm. currency, and mm -hmm. they're too big to move around, so they just keep track of, okay, that's your rock now. I think that's Koror. Ah, there you go, thank you. Yeah, that seems an inefficient currency. Yeah. Uh. Seems fun. <laughs> seems, <laughs> she likes passing around rocks. And claiming ownership of rocks. Yeah, that seems. <laughs> but I think that's more of a like a genealogical connection. I mean, they have like these yeah. family ones, and yeah. they stay put, so they don't well, actually like sense. move. They don't actually right. use them for payment. It's it's considered Status, value, but it's not. It's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. And, and then there's also fun. shells, also that were used as oh, currency. Yeah. Well, more like barter, I think, not really the. 
yeah, the, monetary system we have. The really strange thing I, I just haven't researched or learned about yet is why when uh, uh, sailing ships first were landing in these islands that the indigenous people really liked to get nails. Like nails was a nails from the vessel were a commodity, and I don't know why those were valued because they were iron, probably. Or I think there was less metals on the islands to become iron, and that kind of stuff became extremely valuable as a resource. Yeah, there was no metal um, yeah. on the Hawaiian islands, so metal was a brand new kind of item, and it was strong. Because right. if you think about mostly stone, yeah, was the tools, the yeah. technology was lithics. And so, you know, having this small piece that was so strong, that's probably a pretty cool item to have. Yeah, I, I'd take tiger shark teeth over iron any day, though. Yeah, those yeah. are pretty strong, too. Yeah. Yeah. What's that little thing in the sand right there? Is that just a lighter rock? Can't tell from here. You see that? I think it's sediment. Oh, I see the little thing. Yeah. Ooh. Is that a lighter rock? What is that? Say it's a bit covered rock, I think. Probably. Maybe. Dead sponge, maybe? Yeah, it is. Oh, sorry to waste your guys' time. Guess that waste. rock. So there actually was iron in Hawaii before um, the Europeans came over because oh, the really? Spanish, yep, uh, the Spanish galleons that were coming through uh -huh. like in the 1400s, um, there's evidence that at least one of them shipwrecked uh, in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And so there was some metal pieces and some canvas um, from the sails. Um, and this is during the time of Umi Ali Loa, who was a Hawaiian chief during the 1400s. And so we can kind of date that there was that kind of interaction with Spanish um, mariners so during that time. Bamboos. Yeah, so like they were aware of them, but they hadn't actually contacted in, in the same way. Like they had arrived, they just wrecked, you know? So it wasn't They like, wrecked, yeah. yeah. A but there could have there could have been actually because if you go oh, okay. into the archives um, in the Spanish archives, I do believe that they have logs of the islands. So they were logging this okay. place. Yeah. yeah. Kupa and Naha. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Lobate? Yes. Is this what you expected the summit to look like? No. <laughs> what did you think we were going to see? I thought it was going to be way more fractured. So our summits usually have the oldest rocks on a seamount? Mm, I wouldn't think so. I think more towards the base of the seamount is the oldest. Like, look how, look how beautiful, like, that is beautiful. Kupayanaha. Oh, Kupayanaha. Kupayanaha. <laughs> and it's so smooth. Oh my it's gosh. just like pahoy hoy. I just, I really wish I could just go touch everything. <laughs> so I, I think um, a mile oh, deep man. is about, is like a little bit more than 1600 meters. So we're like, we're at 1575, so we're like really close to exactly a mile deep. Wow. Where is this halter in? I tried to find it. Uh, right under the lasers. Oh, there it is. I see it. Which Thank is, you. you know, 1570 whatever meters is is a number, but a mile deep seems to, like I feel that is more understandable mm -hmm. for me at least. And in a little bit, we'll probably hit that, actually. I think it's 16. Let me look it up. 5,280 feet. 
Orm's mile is 1,609 meters. Yeah, 1,609, that's what I was thinking. So yeah, we'll be there in a few minutes, we'll probably be exactly a mile. Who is this swimming up? Huh? No? Fish. A poo? Fish or eel? Oh. No, that's a sponge. Or a coral. No, right above the lasers. Oh, there, the rat, rat tail. Gone in. Rat Holding. tail. And I think like around 1,500 meters know. is where the, the those small sharks would come in. So I think this whole dive are going to be slightly too deep. Never know. You never know. We'll just have the Meg swim swim in really quickly. Sorry, what was that? The Meg. What? The Meg. What like about it? Meg It'll come just into a dive randomly. Oh. I'm joking. We'll go fix that in post. <laughs> we'll fix that in post. Well, yeah, we've got some viewers sending you a lot of love in the chat right now. I'm just kind of acknowledging um, how much you add to our conversations oh, no here kidding. in the van on our watch and people are curious like how did you get involved with ocean exploration trust and sailing with us oh good question and yeah. thanks thanks for the aloha in the chat um so i have been working with um noah for um five years now and was so fortunate about three years ago to start um, collaborating with the ocean exploration trust on really how to elevate indigenous knowledge and people in the exploration of um, Papahanaumokuakea, um, which is a very um, indigenous space. And so through the, the last three years, we've just been able to really um, amplify Hawaiian knowledge and cultural practice and, um, you know, guide what that looks like, what science looks like in our indigenous spaces. And um, it just so happened that this opportunity came up. I've always been kind of on the back, kind of on the back doing work from the back and not really like um, um, being a face for, for this kind of thing. But this opportunity came up and I jumped on it and was just so excited to be a part of bringing um, Kanaka o Iwi perspectives, so Native Hawaiian perspectives, um, knowledge, um, practices, the cultural protocol that we do um, when we left port. We do cultural protocol for all the dives, the ROVs entering the ocean, bringing coming out of the ocean, um, because we understand that these places were genealogically connected to. So we make sure that that space of connection is honored. And so that's a really long-winded way <laughs> <laughs> of saying that, um, you know, it's, it's really building relationships mm -hmm. with, with organizations, with people, with place, um, and really elevating those connections and those relationships. You've had a much deeper engagement than just coming out on the vessel. You were there in March at our big forum mm -hmm. and was, uh, had a nice chunk of time to give us a lot of background on this leg and were on calls providing us with all sorts of information, uh, provided a lot of resources for everybody on board to read and view ahead of time. Um, yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so yeah, just kind of, you know, doing those things from the back. And then, um, and also this was not just me, this is other people. There's, you know, many uh, other people and my colleagues um, at, at Papahanaumokuakea, like Kanoi Murashige, the cultural working group, um, who've really been just deeply involved in making this a success and really creating a, um, a template for other ocean explora um, exploration um, entities Urgent. to work with indigenous communities. Yeah, it feels like you set the bar really high <laughs> moving forward. 
as we should. Yeah. <laughs> When did you find out that you would be sailing on this leg? Oh, so um, the call went out to the staff at Papahana Mokoakea as they needed a resource monitor. And so that went out like on a Tuesday. And at first when I saw it, I was like, oh, that looks really cool. And I didn't really jump on it immediately. And then I looked at the name of the expedition, which is um, Ala Aumoana Kaiuli. And Aumoana is actually my family name, Kaumoana. And so when I saw the name of the expedition, I was like, oh, I need to get on that. That's cool. That's incredible. And so, yeah, so um, I have a very deep affinity for my um, Kaumoana ancestor, Samuel, Samuela Kaumoana. And um, I just felt like, okay, this if it, if it happens, it happens. Um, I learned like a couple days later that I was chosen to be on um, the expedition. Wow. So yeah, it was just beautiful alignments in all ways. Was that before the forum or after? When um, that was after the after. forum. Yeah, the forum happened in March. Yeah, so I didn't have any expectations in March that okay. I'd be on this yeah. expedition. Yeah. Oh, okay. Huh. Yeah, I just went because I know that, you know, they needed, I, it was just important that we not just share information, but we model it. Right. And so for me, it was really important that I model that. How do you engage with indigenous communities? Could those be nodules? Um, I can't, I can't tell. No, no worries. I'm leaning against. They typically be in like very flat, large fields. They don't like being by other rocks usually. Like deeper silent beds too, usually. The chances are never zero. Yeah, never True. zero. <laughs> I'm just joking with you. So, Malia, you're getting to experience all the parts of shipboard life that uh, anyone who undertakes one of these expeditions does, including, you know, living and working on a vessel, but also trying to wrap everything up at home before you leave for a month and who's going to take care of this and oh, that. Oh, yeah. I think we all had to deal with that, like yeah. making those contingency plans, <laughs> taking care of the animals, the yard, the plants. You know, my kids are all grown up, so that was easier Can we for zoom me. On the orange, sorry. Uh, crinoid. Is it crinoid? I'm guessing. It's crinoid something. On a spot. Oh, I think it's a crinoid, a tiny Walteria sponge crinoid. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Is there shrimp in there? I see something like that. Um, I see some ophioroids, and I think I see one shrimp yeah, up in the middle. Here. One on the crinoid as well. Kupaya Naha. That is amazing. Naha. And it's on, um, what's that word? Botryoidal rock. Yeah. You mean poofy? <laughs> no. <laughs> Bubbly. It's like it looks like frozen bubbles. So Malia, you were saying like all of your kids are grown, but what was it like kind of wrapping up with like work and like kind of getting ready oh, to leave? Expected. Oh, it was hectic. Yeah. Because <laughs> I had so many deadlines and things that I needed to do, and it was Fish. crazy. The last two weeks before I left, man. I believe this is the same guy we saw earlier. Yep. Seen twice now. Seen it twice now. Go for Zoom. I'm sure that was the truth for many of us. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Looks like the same guy. It does. Or girl. Where is that scientific name? The with Hawaiian C, Charlie, I think. Quarter X. Yes. I tried to find it so I can copy and paste, yep. though. 
And it's the live bearer. Yep. There it is. Yeah. See, I'll remember stuff that has like weird associations. So I'll always remember this fish solely because of, sorry, but Chris Kelly going back and forth with himself. Oh, yeah. So now I'll always remember this fish. <laughs> Yeah, I'm super lucky. I've been doing this long enough that my wife and I, we've learned what can I help with and what can I not help with from this far away. Mm. So, you know, it's entirely possible I could go home and go in the garage and be like, huh, is that a new water heater? <laughs> and, you know, the old one died or something. She just takes care of it. Doesn't oh, you're lucky. Doesn't bother me with, <laughs> you know, trying to locate a contractor or something. She just does all that. Oh, wow. What is this guy? Can we get a zoom? Yeah. I see one associate. I see a two. Galathead, two Galatheads. And then maybe a glass sponge at the base. Do we zoom? Sure. I'm not sure where you want to zoom, but bamboo. there's a zoom. Is it bamboo? I Look at the striping. I think so. I see mm. bold trees. Actually, I don't know. Yeah, it's but just bamboo. I can see the stripes Yay. at the base. Uh, looks like you're holding well still. And go to the back. And to the front. Oh, a little too far. Let's get that. You good? Yep. Thank you. All right, coming out. Bye bye. I used to try and describe to people coming out to sea for the first time what it was like, and I've now concluded that it's impossible, and I don't even try. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll be honest, like, those last couple of weeks I had before leaving were, like, so busy, um, and I think what made it, like, uh, especially difficult was um, I was with my students for 14 days, and then I left them. So I was also having to plan for the fact that like I have had new students join my class that I have not met and I've been mm. having to like, you know, explain to them where I am, what I'm doing um, and explain to them kind of like what it is that they're supposed to be working on right now. Um, and that was difficult. I had kind of a lot that I was trying to prepare them for because, you know, they're freshmen, they're just coming to high school. So I pretty much had to tell them on their second day of school, like, hi, nice oh, to meet you. Was something other that rock? And I'm about to leave for like a few weeks. <laughs> oh, that must have been tough. It was. Yeah. Sea star. Sea star. But it is an experience that you can bring back to the classroom. Yeah, definitely. You know, and I think it's just going to be so much more richer. And you have so much great resources to share. Go for zoom. Oh, there's a little something brown right there too. Yeah. To the right. Oh, two panamis. Several. It looks like there's something else also under the rock. Oh, they're very Muppet looking. Yeah, so that's another two panamis. So three two panamis and one star. And botryoidal rock texture. Mangan I'm sorry, manganese crust texture. There's something. Maybe not. Alright. Thank you. And that is a beautiful pohaku. I agree. 
They chose a nice one. Yeah, it looks like a sperm whale. Well, it does. Sort of. If you use your imagination. I can see it. Or manatee. <laughs> Depending on the angle. Fish to the right, top right. I think it was one of those anti moras again. I don't think we ever got to, ex to finish that extinction talk. That's right. I don't really remember where we were. I think Hannah was explaining the extinction of the dinosaurs and the possible causes. Yeah. What about it? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. OK. <laughs> Um, I heard from one of my classes, and I'm not sure how accurate this is, that apparently the for the areas that were not like major hit with the asteroid directly, mm -hmm. that the sound boom knocked over some of the larger dinosaurs. It caused them not to get up, wow. which was apparently something that can happen. And they can't get back up and they die. I I'm not sure how accurate that is. I I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised. I don't know, but again, would not be surprised if that is true. What is it? The Yucatan Peninsula? Yucatan? Yucatan, Yucatan Peninsula. It's crazy how big the crater, crater is, is there. Yeah. It's so big you can't even tell the crater unless you go from a macro scale. Yeah. Well, did, wasn't there like a sonic boom from the um, Tonga, mm -hmm. the Honga Tonga eruption volcano? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think there was. I don't That's think it was. Did it reach Hawaii? I don't think it did. I don't remember hearing the sonic boom. I I don't think I've ever heard a sonic boom in my life. I wouldn't know what how to tell. I imagine it would be similar to like jets flying by when they're going at full speed. I'm not sure if any of you guys it's like have felt that. like a very sharp crack kind yeah. of sound. Hmm. I remember like a couple of years ago, um, President Obama flew into Washington and then someone in their private plane accidentally flew into the airspace around him and they scrambled the jets over an area where they normally don't go. It's like a residential neighborhood. And the sound booms went through my neighborhood. And it felt like the house literally moves with it when it, they flew by. Wow. Yeah. And we're like, we didn't see it coming. We're like, what was that? And it just happened again because it was two back to back. Mm. Very weird experience. I have a feeling this is what the bookcase in Hannah's apartment looks like. <laughs> um, so I separated. Well, I don't have a lot of basalts because I feel bad taking them sometimes. <laughs> so I only have like, I think I only have like one, one basalt. Huh. There's a basalt ridge near in my hometown. It's uh, in Connecticut. It's like a, it's called Avon Mountain, but it uh. Yeah, it's, a, it's just like a volcanic intrusion that came through, I don't know, a long time ago, but we, we hike it a lot. 
I try to only take like one of each thing that I've seen. I can send I can send you a piece next time I'm home. <laughs> you could. Literally my so I separate my shelf into sedimentary rocks, igneous rocks, and metamorphic rocks. As you should. Yes. <laughs> Which do you have more of? Um oh I also separated by minerals too. Um uh, right now I have most mineral mostly minerals. My brother and I collect uh, minerals off and on. My favorite's pyrite. Wow, I don't have pyrite. I just love that nature can form a perfect cube. Mm. That's like a, what is it? I also really like galena, which is a lead sulfite yeah, instead yeah. of a, sulfate, sulfite instead of a, uh, sulfide, sorry, instead of a iron sulfide. Yeah, I think it's halite, which salt? is salt. Yeah, 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 that has a, yeah, yeah. perfect cube. Yeah. Fluorite is cool because it's like Fluorite hexa is hexagons. Multiple yeah. colors. Now we're going to go down a rabbit hole because I love minerals. Oh, my God. Yeah, I I th I'm pretty sure I have a fluorite. I do, actually. There are actually a lot of my minerals that I have, I bought from a rock shop in Maine in Acadia, Acadiana Acadia? National, yes, Acadia National Park. I think, I can't remember what the town is called. I'm going to look it up. Bar Harbor? Yes, that's it. Bar Harbor. <laughs> Bar that's Harbor? exactly it. Bar yes. Harbor. Bar Harbor? Yeah. Yeah, no. Because my dad, uh, he's from Maine. So we went to go visit last year. And we went to Bar Harbor. And yeah, exactly how you just pronounce it, that's how my grandpa now oh, pronounces yeah. it. I'm from Bar Harbor. Also, my grandpa, he would call me Hanner. <laughs> Hanner. 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 And, uh, it, I literally so was cute. so confused. That's funny. <laughs> I wonder if your parents named you that just for that. Hanner. I don't know. Hanner. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> when I was little, I was like, I don't have an R on my name. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> it's his accent, his That's main so accent. Funny. Hanner. <laughs> oh, Nar. <laughs> oh, Nar. Hanner. Oh, Nar. 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 You're, You're so better. good at that. <laughs> Nar. I guess it's a. She had to practice. She thought she was yeah. a she It was called she... H2O and just had water. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Also, it's just like my sister, she can do a really good Australian accent. Oh, that's funny. I don't know how she does it so well. But then, I, then I, when, also me and my sister, like, we always talk in like Southern accents too, whenever we call each other and we notice that. <laughs> like one time my sister, she called me um, when I was like waiting for a class to start and I was like next to one of my friends from California. and. All of a sudden, I just started talking. Like my sister started talking in a country accent, and then I started con t talking in a country accent. And then after I got off the phone with her, my friend was like, "Does your sister have a country accent?" And I was like, "No, we just like talking in a country <laughs> accent to each other. It's just like something we do." But I think I, I think I have a pretty good country accent, at least because I would go to Mississippi for like soccer camps, and they would all have the country accent. Also, one of my close friends, that's a geologist, she has a country She's accent. Yeah. Bridge Nav. Could we please track a line bearing 115 at 0 0.3 knots? I'm just disappointed that Sebastian has England citizenship and he can't do an Does English he? accent. Nope. I cannot do an English accent, but I do have a British citizenship. Ooh, British cool. citizenship. <laughs> One of your parents are from there? My mom is. Oh. Her uh, mom is, like, so cool. The James Cam She worked with James Cameron. She's British. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, she doesn't have the accent. She was raised in Seattle from the age of, like, eight, so she lost her accent. Mm. There's a beach ball we've I been think, looking for. Like, what is that's that? That's a Dumbo. <gasps> oh, it is. Yippee! Oh. Oh, it's Bridge a beach ball octopus. <laughs> <laughs> I love how 
<laughs> Tell the boat to stop now. Yeah, he's like, I just know it's coming. <laughs> and all of, all of our voices don't want to get jump too active. close because we'll oh <laughs> disturb it with the thrusters. Oh. That was funny. I figure we can image this for a while. <laughs> you wow. said that this is a beach ball? No, it no, no, just looked like oh, a beach okay. ball. <laughs> I was like, is this an A for the <laughs> a beach ball. Kupai and Naha. Kupai and Naha, yeah. I was about to say that about these rocks because they were just so massive. And I love that. I love that oh. you saw the rocks first. You're becoming a geologist. Getting corrupted. Well, to be fair, we were over the rocks before the octopus. It's okay. It's fine. Don't tell me that. <laughs> oh. So cute. He's like, I'm not cute, I'm a vicious hunter. <laughs> Probably like, why are you come bothering my sleep? Yeah. <laughs> you guys found my hiding place, now I have to find a so new one. So how old do you think this guy, this, this um, old oh, that's a good question. baby is? For deep sea octopuses, this is a very different scale of age measurement compared to shallow water octopuses, because a lot of deep sea octopuses can live a very long time. Let's see. That's cool. Let's see what Google says. Um, I'm not sure for this particular species, though. A tiny urchin off on the right. What is that? Sorry. That's the uh, right it's edge moving. of the frame. Doo -doo -doo. It's well, a it's urchin. It's okay, not mission impossible. It's three to five years. Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> they live for three to five years. Hmm. Oh, I wonder where they got the worldwide. numbers for that. This one seems to be Grimpotuthis, I believe, is the name. It kind of does look like a beach ball. It's a very pale white one. I'm looking at where the species has been found and I'm like, y'all need to add more. Well, there's more multiple species of Dumba octopus. Mm. Oh, this is a really good view. Um, um. Oh, that's a nice view in the Silgam for sure. Sometimes I click take a picture in the still cam, but I'm looking at this. Mm -hmm. and then, oh. <laughs> Oops. I do. I would probably do the exact same thing. <laughs> That's my job. <laughs> Can you zoom in on that? What's funny is that they always look like they're looking the wrong way. So like it looks like it's looking to the left, but it's actually the front is that way, right? Oh, I've never interpreted it looking to the left. Well, I always think that that's the nose. I don't know why, but okay, Ghostbusters 2, the Coming villain, that looks like the villain, like zoomed up like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. The yeah, Stay yeah. Puft Marshmallow Man? <laughs> no, the second movie. Oh. wonder where that yellow d spot is inside the mantle. I think it's reflecting the light. Uh, yeah, we saw that when we first pulled up and even when it moved around. I think that's internal. That is and internal. That it's slightly translucent. Movement on the far left is from our thrusters. I believe. Right, but I think... Because I saw a second one of these yellow dots on the other side. Yep. I think you may be muted, Maria. <laughs> no, I'm just wondering if it's, if this, uh, is in fight or flight. Oh, look at it, look at it. It's just getting... That's from our thrusters. Oh, wow, that's, you know how sometimes textures change on yeah. her and octopus? It's probably curious what we are too, but it's also probably being cautious and knows that we're not coming after it right now, so it probably thinks it's in a safe spot. Nice. Well, we should probably let that guy get back to his nap. You getting yeah. good stuff with that still, or is it too far off yeah. to the right? Yeah, I am. Good. These rocks are just a beautiful backdrop. Yeah, wow. it looks really nice. It seemed like there was I really slight appreciate movement that, of the eye. Did really you really see that? that? See it? 
Um, I didn't see anything. Sorry, what'd you say? See the eye? There's slight movement around there. Yeah. It's watching us. So you can see his arm curled up right there. Yep. Cool. Yeah, should we move on? Yeah. Yeah, Thanks, it's guys. nice. Cool pie and huh? Bye. That was very cool. Bye. Beautiful little one. Something else top of frame Bridge right. Nap. That's white. No, no, that's sediment. Disregard. Like, scary. Exposure's off. Low push. So we're approaching the next sub-summit, correct? Yep. Are we going to try and go for another rock sample? Oh, wow. Three oh. rocks in a day? I mean, wow. it's waypoint seven. Is that actual I mean, kilometer? I mean, or do you think it's going to be any different from what we collected before? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean... I mean, by the time we get there, well, I guess we're almost there. Literally. Never mind. Let's see what we see. If it's like this, we're not getting anything. No, <laughs> nor, nor, nor we're not. <laughs> I do really like looking at these rocks right here. We have a convert. Yes. Yes, Tori. Yes, yes, yes. Just look at them. It's Kupai and Naha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why I said low bait is like the perfect one. You get the best of both worlds. This looks promising. Yeah, it does. Sure does. They heard us. The Puhakus were like, we got you. Then they came into a herd. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah. Assemble. Assembled into a herd because they heard <laughs> us. So, Tori, when you're um, visiting Oahu after you're we debark from the Nautilus. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of beautiful places you'll see where you can see these different kind of um, lava flows. Nice. Maybe not like this, but you'll see Aa, -a, you'll see Pahoehoe. Um, there's mm -hmm. lots of different places that you can visit to check it out. I definitely will. Oh, that's amazing. I really like to visit Punch Bowl when I have time. Yeah, that is a beautiful place. It's gorgeous. Leahi is a good place to visit, Diamond Head. They have a nice hike. And you can sometimes see some of the stratigraphy um, in, the, in the lava flows, the basalt. Um, it's like a crater. Um, Coco Head's another great place. Mm -hmm. Literally, this looks fantastic. I don't know where we, oh, we're really, all, we're almost there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're just coming up the last bit of slope. Got about 85 meters to the top. Mm. Awesome. Yeah, I've literally, because I, I describe like where, we, like what we see, and I've literally just like, low all, literally all low bait. Yeah. We, we, I think we came in on wave point five. Um, I think so. Yeah, we're turning this out because we did from on bottom to just before waypoint two this morning. Right. Yes. And now we're almost. Then we came in at five. We're almost at eight. No, it's mm -hmm. seven. Seven of nine. So, okay, so we did come in at five. Sweet star. No, we were there at 
that sample 086. So we were like, came in just past waypoint four. Wow. We're moving. Yeah, I don't think this dive's gonna take as long as we've scheduled tonight. Yeah, well, I have a hard time we, seeing that. We, we move faster than the other watches. Also, waypoint nine, like there's a lot to explore if they run out of waypoint. Wait, do you really think we moved the fastest? Yeah. Yeah, we're not really seeing much, so. Then that's been true on a lot of the watches, on a lot of the dives. There's your, uh, what's this Is that a pumice? Yeah. Pumice? Pumice. Not hummus. Kupai and Naha. <laughs> I love hummus. Hummus is awesome. Wow. It's just laying perfectly right there. Yeah. Can you, like, Try and give us a description of like where did this come from? This probably mm -hmm. came Go from a yeah. volcanic eruption on land. The bottom's almost more interesting it than that. And just like floated. floated from the current from wherever what? the nearest volcano was. And that's the boat. And then it got waterlogged, and it sunk. And Dr. Val told me that when she cut open a pumice one time, just like a ton of water Tiny came crab. out of that's it. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Tiny crab. So I would expect a ton of water to come out. There's a tiny squat lobster. Squat lobster. What's the white thing over on the right? Uh, okay. Is that the... I think that's a chitin, yeah. Chitin. Uh, Y'all yeah. said that is a very tiny little squat lobster? Yes. Wow. A baby. Wait, I really want everybody to post their, their dogs, Virtual. though. Like, I really think that'd be so... Well, they're animals, not just their dogs. How would we do that? I don't know, but okay. I would really like to see everybody's animals. Okay. We should all that make, like, a slideshow. That could be an Instagram takeover day. Yeah. It's just pets. Yes. As Nautilus. And just go around asking for pictures of pets to post on the store. Oh, yeah. They do like to do those takeovers. That could mm -hmm. work. I get Kim to send me a picture of Arlo watching the live stream. Yeah, I've got one of Dinky. Dinky. Maybe like a this kind of takeover where we would take our pets and compare them to deep sea animals. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, I let me try to think. Rosie's white and <laughs> white and black. I hereby endorse this plan as an Instagram takeover. Yeah. <laughs> That's an excuse for Megan to show the dog. Right. All right, everyone, start getting your pictures ready. I. Uh, Okay. All right, think it up. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Oh, it's so cute. Oh. <laughs> Turn our lights. That is Chana Cox right there. Chana Cox for sure. <laughs> when my when my puppy was a well, when Rosie was a puppy, her favorite stuffed animal was a dolphin. Oh. No. Yeah. It was really cute until she destroyed him. <laughs> and then I was so mad. I was like, how dare you kill him? I called him Mr. Dolphin. I was like, how dare you kill him? <laughs> but, yeah. Loki's been through many stuffed animals. Pretty flat mm -hmm. up here. Yeah, pretty flat here. Oh, I think you're muted. <laughs> so our dog, Lau Lau, her favorite toy is coconut branches. Oh. She loves coconut branches. She like goes wild for them. <laughs> I want to find coconut branches for Rosie. I have a great, another great photo of Rosie. Listen to headphones. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> Look. <laughs> I love that. Virgin She's so photogenic. I think it's anemone. Yeah, I think so too. Dinky has a little stuffed nurse shark that <gasps> a nurse she, shark likes, she likes to hang out oh, with. Oh wow. Look at that rock. Uh, these marks that we're seeing, is this just the way that the sediment landed in between? Looks like it. Just um, highlighting the changes in the flow.
The hard part's gonna be picking the picture. I know, I'm literally like, I'm looking at all the photos of my dog and I'm like, I don't know which one I would want. She's well, just too on an cute. Instagram story, you can like put the picture oh, and then oh put my gosh, another wait. little picture. Idea, yeah. idea. We each make a collage, send it, she can post it, and you say, like, you go onto your Instagram and you make a edit of it on it, and then you save it, and then you send it. Oh, I don't, I did not follow that. <laughs> that sounded like a lot of work. That sound it's, like, not, it's not a lot of work. <laughs> that sounded like a lot of work. It sounded like some Gen Z work. Yeah. You just go to, <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I, I know what I'm going to do then. Okay. Always <laughs> tell our uh, outreach professionals that oh, I'd like their help. This was one of my greatest works. Someday to help me do an Instagram takeover of my own account. <laughs> There's a transition right there. Wow. Yeah. Hannah, look at this. Kupaya Naha. Wow, low bait flow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Are we rock hunting? Yeah. Look at this field. It's not a field, but I guess a lava lava flow field. Like <laughs> that one. <laughs> so cute. Bridge nav. Ooh, look at these. I think that's a dead sponge right there. Mm -hmm. Two. Two dead sponges. I am really surprised we saw a Dumbo octopus. I'm I yeah, that one kind of came out of nowhere. That was crazy. <laughs> the chances are never zero. <laughs> they really just kind of popped up out of nowhere. Yeah. Too. I thought it was going to be just one bit of those round glass sponges. I thought of a simpler way to explain what I was talking about. Basically, <laughs> you make a collage of pictures of your animal. That and sounds then like send a lot of work. To how about I work. give you lots of pictures and you make a collage? How do we, I don't know how an Instagram uh, takeover works. Just add pictures to the Instagram story? Yes. And it can it can be as simple as literally like one photo of your yes. pet. And to the pet's my story? Name. No, to the oh. Nautilus Live Instagram. Oh, just share it. Yeah, so if oh, you just like yeah. send us the picture and pet's name and I don't know anything you want to write about your pet. Yeah, like I, I'm going to do a collage of all three of the animals. That makes I, sense. I have to include the alien photo of Einstein. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And I'll find, I'll find a crazy photo of Coraline because she's, actually no, she's super cute. But so. for a takeover, there's a certain time window to do that, right? I have no idea. What do you mean, like time of day? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, not if we're just doing animals. Oh. No. Uh, I don't think I don't know. we would need it. Hold on. I think there are certain times of day where you will get maybe more engagement, but we have audiences, like, oh. everywhere. But I thought, like, Instagram take was supposed to be, like, at a, like all at once or something. Normally, we, we do takeovers. It's, it's kind of almost like a day it. in the life. Oh, a day? Okay. That makes Sometimes, sense. but they don't have to be. Yeah. So we could just do an Instagram takeover of... Pets. So we can yeah. collect a rock somewhere in here if you guys want to start picking up something. Yeah. Yeah, rocks. This looks great. I can see how this is going to play out already. It's going to be like, here's a picture of Mike's pet, and here's Megan's dog, <laughs> and here's Ed's dog, and here's Megan's dog, and here's Derek's pet, and here's oh. Megan's dog. But that's what it's going to be, right? <laughs> <laughs> And that's okay, because she can. Absolutely. <laughs> She's an and expedition leader. Pictures, and I want to see them. <laughs> what an amazing video they did the Megan. other day for oh. the word of the day. Mm -hmm. I think it was leader. And then they turned aside at the very end to reveal Megan on the crane launching or recovering the vehicle. It was awesome. Yep. A la cutie. Yeah, that was a crazy <laughs> one. These are all bachioidal. It reminded yeah, me of that great sure video are. of the guy explaining I'm how a rocket works. And he says, and then when you mix them together, you That's get this. Massive. It is and massive. a rocket takes it's off like behind him. 20 centimeters. <laughs> Which one are you going for? I don't know. Mike, oh, if it's big, okay. you're going to have to take it, it out. It is big, but it's not 
huge. I, I mean, may, maybe this one. Worm. I don't know. Where? Where? Uh, right behind the rock they're well, looking, looking at. Look at rocks. Oh, right here. Maybe a polychaete? Oh, yeah. Maybe. No. Polychaetes don't move like that. This one looks free. Yeah, I was, I was looking there. I was looking there. There. Oh. It moved. God bless you. Wait, the song is amazing. There we go. Puhaku. Yay or nay? I say yay. Yeah, it looks good. Well, what, 10 centimeters? Yep. Yeah. Yay. Starboard box? Starboard, Starboard box. box. Cameras, box out, um, E or F. Echo Foxtrot, you got it. Sample. I think you're pushing against the box. How many biological samples do we have? Two. Oh my gosh. Yeah, science has been pretty quiet Sample on the bio. Sample collected. In E? Yay, okay. thank you. Thank okay. you. Coming back around to dive. That's sample number 88. So, Hannah, I hope I get this right because otherwise it's a botched attempt and I'm remembering what our many things our daughter has said, but I'm surprised that one of your cats is not named Meredith. What? Meredith. Meredith? Yeah. Oh, because of Taylor Swift? Am I right? That is one of her cat's oh, names. Oh, home run for the old guy. Yeah. How do you know that? Our daughter. Ed's a oh, okay. Swifty. Yeah. No, I... That's what I do She when named I'm it Meredith after Grey's just Anatomy. follow the... Uh, Tour but, around yeah. to see tour. I'm so yeah. making this up. Literally, so I named Einstein because I wanted to name a cat Einstein, <laughs> and then Coraline because it's one of like, an, it's an iconic movie, honestly, <laughs> yeah. fantastic movie. Um, and then Rosie is after another movie that I really love, love Rosie, and that's where the names of my pets have come from. But I've had Bacchus. Um, that's after a parade in New right, Orleans. Right, Not, yeah. And then... There's a gay bar named Bacchus in Hawaii. Yeah. Oh. That w that's uh, on brand. But let me think. Our first dog was Marina. After a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, not after a marina? No. Well, it was called Marina Cafe, 
and it was on a marina. Bridge, no? And we were going to eat there, and my brother was like, why not marina? And we were all like, that's fantastic. Can we track a line, please, bearing 105 at 0 0.3 knots? Also, we had Thank a cat you. named Ray after Star Wars. Ah, with an E. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, Harold, Jeffrey, Frank, after Frank Sinatra. Um, honey, Margarita. Oh my gosh, you guys have had a lot of animals. <laughs> yeah, we, we did. Well, we live on a golf course, and unfortunately, there are a lot of coyotes. Oh. Yeah. So, it's really, it was, it's sad. There seems to be a strong correlation in our neighborhood between coyote sightings and lost cat posters. Yes. So now our cats are, like, only inside. But uh, we yeah. let them like go outside because you know they love like they love climbing the trees and it's so good for their like nails and stuff. But it's just we've had too many killed from coyotes. That's sad. Yeah. I know cats in Hawaii are kind of problematic. Like they really encourage people to keep their cats indoors oh. because they're just natural predators, right? They just yeah. hunt and so a lot of the um, problems that stem from that with the native birds and mm -hmm. um, seabirds. So, yeah. I, I think I remember, because last time that I came to Hawaii, I looked up invasive species, and there were so many invasive species in, in Hawaii. Huh. And I was Yeah, it's shocked. pretty ridiculous. Yes. We're like a free port for anything that's brought in. Like, we should have a definite list of things that can enter. But that's not happening, and so we get all of these invasives. Like, mm -hmm. it's awful. Well, like, I how mean, much stuff come in on plants, like, you know, these big yeah. box stores? Like, so much invasive have come in on plants that they import. And really, for terrestrial animals, only birds are natural. Everything else that's on, that lives on land had to come in on ships and planes, right? Um, well, we do have a mammal. We have um, Ope'ape'a, the bat. <laughs> Well, yeah. Yeah. But it, like, nothing, like, because nothing could have walked or swum here. Yeah. Um, and then there were those that were brought in um, by Polynesians. So yeah. our ancestors brought the pig and the chicken. Unfortunately, the rat was also on board those. Oh, so oh the yeah. rats didn't come from the. Uh, uh, nope, European they came ship, in so. with the, on the, uh, on the canoe. Did they bring them purposefully or accidentally? Accidentally, I okay. think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. In uh, Puerto Rico, they uh, they credit their large feral cat population with uh, keeping the rats off of the island, especially during the plague, and keeping everybody there healthy. So feral cats are it's actually a public employee who goes around and feeds them every day. They have feeding stations for the feral cats. It's kind oh, of a yeah. permanent thank you for keeping that off the island. Interesting. Yeah, they don't let that happen here in Hawaii. That's actually frowned upon. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, Hawaii actually learned early on not to use that strategy because of the mongoose. They brought them the mongoose to get rid of the rats, but then the mongoose didn't eat the rats. They ate the birds instead. Right. And they're diurnal. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. the mongoose, the rats are nocturnal, and the mongoose are diurnal. So go. the whole like idea of bringing them in was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, and mongooses eat snakes, which are not on Hawaii. No, we don't have snakes. So one thing that they've managed to not bring in, or they Wait, managed to keep off. That's actually, that sounds fantastic that there are no snakes. Yeah, I like that about Hawaii. I like that. We have the blind Hawaiian snake, which is actually more like a worm. Okay. It's really a cute little guy who stays underground all the time. I want to look at yeah. it. That's fine. He can stay. <laughs> yeah, human attempts to manage that kind of nature don't pan out very well, usually. Yeah, they actually released sterile male snakes on the big island, which is like, to me, just crazy. I don't understand that. <laughs> why, but there's apparently snakes. People bring snakes into Hawaii, mm -hmm. and then they release them. Oh. So there's been like... Um, oh, really? Boa constrictors. Like pets. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, that, I mean, it's we deal with crazy. that in Hawaii I think all the time. I'm sorry, in Florida. Yeah. Like there, there's actual like 
annual um, hunts like thing. You get paid for for capturing all these pythons that have been released from uh. from people's houses. They're like, oh, I don't want you anymore, and, or the, whatever. It's a it's it's a huge menace down it's in like the uh, especially oh, yeah. southern Florida. Hippos down in Colum is it Columbia? Hippos. People yeah. yeah. Hippos. Oh, I love hippos. Um, oh. uh, Pablo Escobar, Pablo Escobar yeah. brought them in. Oh. I think he started with like two, maybe. Yeah, and they've just yeah. run amok. Jeez, Th those are. I mean, that's a that's an ecological Urchin. disaster. Yeah. Right? those things are yeah. very yeah. territorial, and they eat a lot of grass and stuff. And oh, that's um, a new urchin. Where? Right there. Uh, bottom right. It's new. That's what new. Pretty that much. from what we've seen. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's urchin. Is that it's it's an anemone. anemone? It might be anemone actually. Because it's not as. Um, it's flowy. Yeah, it's flowy. Yeah, it's an enemy. Oh, yeah, I think this is a uh, tube enemy, isn't it? I think so. It's very pretty. Do I have a loose for a second? Can't tell. Wow, apparently you oh, yeah, can't outrun a hippo. No. Oh, no, hippos they're a lot are faster than me. Hippos think. are terrifying. I think that's I one of the most dangerous so animals much. in uh, like Africa is a hippo. They kill more people a year than sharks. A lot more people than sharks. Yeah, so those hippos, I like went down a rabbit hole one time learning about them because I think one of the things that like was just blowing my mind was how uh, like successful they are at reproducing now in Colombia because like uh, normally one of the things that they compete for is like water and so they are typically very territorial and now there are like so many hippos that share these bodies of water but like the population's getting too big so they like have started to move out in a way which is you know dangerous and um, there's something else about how they would only get pregnant at certain times of the year um, like in Africa, but in Colombia, they're noticing that like they are kind of just getting pregnant, like whenever and having <laughs> babies just all the time, oh, great. which is making it like so we're going downhill. worse. Yep. Um, I wonder if it's because the environment is so lush yeah. they're that, just like they're, that environmental conditions that are in place are on their reproductive. Hmm. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. Adaptation, right? Yeah. And they're like, you know, uh, coming in and out, in and out of the water. So like the riverbeds, mm, there's like a lot of erosion. erosion and, and, yeah. yeah. Are they carnivores? What? Hippos? Hippos? No, they just eat like uh, lake grass. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so they just they're herbivores. Just big, they're they're big just cows. Yeah. Oh. Like river cows. They just can be like really aggressive and territorial. Mm -hmm. um, there's pretty cool videos on YouTube of hippos eating watermelons. Uh, it's worth watching. They're just so cute. They're literally so cute. I well, love the hippos. The baby ones. ones are adorable. I don't care. I love the big ones, too. They're so cute. <laughs> Have you seen the videos of them charging people? No, but now I need to go see <laughs> them. Have you That's seen the cute. videos of them eating or, watermelons like gushers? Yes, I have. They're my favorite animal. Is it that they, like, don't swim? They, like, are just running really fast? What is it? Like, what? they just move really fast in the water. And on land. Yes. So there's a video that one of them underwater chasing a uh, speedboat and just about catching it. Wow. It's crazy fast. So there's an interesting word people, instead of, um, I've heard, instead of invasives, some uh, indig indigenous women actually used the word displaced relatives. And I was just like, wow, that is just a really in interesting concept. Um, like we look at these things that come in as invasives and harmful, but she put a spin on it and she said, this is just displaced. Mm -hmm. They're displaced relatives. I just, it, it gave me a little pause to think about that because those are, you know, humans who are displacing, who are bringing in, you know, it's, it's because of anthropogenic mm -hmm. kind of pressures. Interference. So. 
Yeah, so it was just interesting. I was just like, oh, that's an interesting way to look at them. Oh my gosh. Are you still looking at hippos? I'm watching this hippo following yeah. a boat and it's like terrifying. It is. Oh wow. Jesus. Uh, yeah. And that boat is not just sitting there, it's moving. No, it is moving. They actually like sped it up to get away. Get away. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'll have to go down that rabbit hole later. <laughs> <laughs> next watch. <laughs> no, not next watch. <laughs> I think the most recent rabbit hole I went down was like the Komodo dragon. Oh yeah. I went down the uh, geochemistry rabbit hole earlier. I saw. Yeah. I was very happy about that. I'm going to go find the papers that I took a photo of with my phone and get them on my laptop. I remember reading some of them. The ones Hello. about uh, incompatible elements and melts. <laughs> Look at this low bait flow. Beautiful. Low bait flow. I should make a song or something. <laughs> to Taylor Swift, like, low bait flow. Sheep flow. I'm not quite sure where we're going. All right, the four to eight watches. We're going to start heading off. We've got out. people coming in. Watch up and moving on. We saw some pretty good stuff. We yeah. sure did. This was, was amazing. Sure did. Sure did. <laughs> um, I hope they still got those Oreos. That was your southern accent. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was your country accent. That is the country accent. accent. I can't good. imagine. No. I thought about when I moved to California. I was like, what if I just like talk to the contract the yeah, yeah like nobody would know and they just stop like a few weeks in like, what? <laughs> yeah 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 i literally thought about like, doing oh that. i learned the california accent already <laughs> or just come back after this trip just speaking that accent yeah I'm like what <laughs> i had a hard time moving to the west coast but i'm from philadelphia which has an accent noted mostly for being unintelligible mumbling <laughs> uh, and so it was just strange like a asking somebody at like a restaurant for a glass of water and they're like, water. like a, water? but in context, like how would you not know what I'm asking for? Water. I know how to do it now. I put a hard T in the middle. Water. water. Well, that sounds weird too. And water. then our, our kid water. is our daughter, daughter. but mentally Wait, I, I like spell that D-O-T-T-E-R, our daughter. Otherwise we say do daughter. Get daughter. Water. Oh, I feel like water. I can say water in, water. A, in an Australian accent. Water. Water. Get out of the water. <laughs> get, out of the wa get out of the water. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a, because it goes clear. Get out of the water. <laughs> Cleo. Was it clear that they said that you look snake? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh no. <laughs> it's so good. I just think it's funny that in Australia and New Zealand, the word no is multiple syllables. Yeah. It's <laughs> just funny. It's fantastic. We're so boring. No. No. Nar. No. Nar. <laughs> Nar. Nar. You'll get there. I'll get there. Nar. I'll get that. Nar. It sounded pretty good. Nar. Nar. Because you have to like, the tone has to go upwards too. Nar. 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 <laughs> sound like a uh, mine, mine. Mine. <laughs> that looked like the, uh, the, the the birds that were on the uh, the winch last yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. Like they're all sitting there like mine. Mine. Watch change of video, Robert. They were actually fighting each other. The birds. <laughs> really? Yeah, I'm not even kidding. I have videos of it. Oh, of them cool. fighting. I, I thought to take a video of when their A-frame started moving, but I for, I didn't I didn't get my. Oh, I didn't get. I went to the the bat. Oh yeah. The front. The bar. They were. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Nar. <laughs> Not today. Nar. <laughs> it's definitely the end of watch. Yeah. <laughs> my mom was.
texting me last night being like, y'all must be tired. Y'all are silly. <laughs> y'all are was, silly. <laughs> that was our watch, I think, no, earlier this morning. Old. I don't know when that was. It had to be this morning. This back row is the letter. Because hey. I was about to say, our talk yesterday was really serious. Like, our last She one? was asleep for that. Oh, okay. Yeah, she. Wow. I would try to explain to her. I was like, Mom, I was, you know, dropping some knowledge, but they were asleep. It dropping was some knowledge. The movie talk. Oh, yeah, no. Right. It was, yeah. All right, bye, y'all. Bye. I'm still waiting for my girl, Virginia. Come back. Be here. No need to fear, internet, all of our amazing deep sea travelers joining us on Nautilus Live and on YouTube from around the world. This is the 8 to 12 show. Yep, we are back. Excited to be with you on, this one has a name. I've already forgotten. Uh, Woolard. Woolard Seamount. It's up on the board. Oh. If you need it. Woolard, there it is. Yeah, our data loggers uh, help keep us uh, all in line with that info. They do. And uh, uh, from what I understand, interesting interesting history, interesting character, Woolard, geologist. I didn't know if you were familiar. Um, uh, I have, yeah, uh, I'm not familiar with the name, but yeah, you, lo you looked this person up? S someone left this up for us. Oh, my gosh. Um, to George Pryor Woolard, and uh, sounds like a remarkable sort of renaissance man of sorts. And... Uh, Ah, another HIG yeah. person. Yeah. Uh, HIG stands for Hawaii Institute of uh, Geophysics. Yeah. Uh, one of the divisions at University of Hawaii at Manoa. Very cool. Yeah. Seems like a nice guy. Google him. George Woolard. They named a Mauna Kai after him. Yeah. A lot of amazing geologists have uh, passed through that uh, that department over the decades. 
course, this is me speaking with a little bias since I uh, since I did some schooling there. <laughs> <laughs> You're allowed to love love UH. Of course. Bless you, bless you. All right, I think we're getting settled in to take a look at Polyopagon? No, I'm making yes, that up. Yes, I believe oh, so. I got it right. Yeah, oh us non-biologists are I killing agree. it. Oh my god. Hey. I agree. Polyopagon? <laughs> what are we looking yeah. at? Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yes, uh. Well got done, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> got him. And I just have to say, for our online viewers, uh, we did get treated to an absolutely stunning sunset on our way up to the control van. So that's yeah. why we all kind of started coming in at different times. <laughs> yes, I couldn't pull myself away. It was just so pretty. I, I was a little sad, but I'm also happy to be here in the control van and uh, uh, seeing where we are with the uh, with the dive. In the dark box. <laughs> <laughs> Can we zoom in? Thing. Our amazing co-expedition leader, Megan Cook, just uh, sorting out this dive plan and uh, sharing that, man, we're just hitting all the spots and uh, flying right along. So uh, maybe off, maybe off the bottom a little sooner than expected, but uh, hey. That's what happens. The greatest watch of all time. We get the job done. Get it finished sometimes. Get it done. Viewers approve. They yeah. like they like the plan. They probably want sleep. Yeah, Ooh. so do we. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, uh, we're making good progress. Uh, coming up on waypoint eight, which is uh, the second to last waypoint, and uh, yeah, sounds like we're going to be on deck at midnight and uh, uh, recovering uh, re recovering Adelina and Herc and uh, the sample payload. <laughs> and we don't have to get up at uh, 4 a.m. for it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. So oh. Apologies in advance to the crew for all of the saw noises in the morning, but I have to catch up on rocks and there are many to cut. <laughs> So what time are we launching then? Um, so the original launch time on the board was uh, 4 p.m. tomorrow, and it sounds like we're moving to uh, noon, according to what Megan just told so us. like noon? Can we zoom out again? That's what it's sounding like, yeah. All right. TBD. Are we taking a wrap out? Stand by to stand by. Standing by. <laughs> All right, well, just a couple hours left then on the bottom for for us to uh, enjoy exploring the beautiful Woolard Seamount in this corner of Papahanaumokuakea, just north. I think we're roughly 40 or 50 nautical miles north of Kure Atoll, on the far end of the northwestern Hawaiian Islands on this Ala Aumuana Kaiuli, Path of the Deep Sea Traveler Expedition, NA 154. Mm -hmm. Appreciate all of you for tuning in with us and adventuring with us, discovering with us, and mm -hmm. sharing in this exploration together. Yeah, where indeed. Are people, where are people coming from? Let's see, let's have a look. I know we've got uh, viewers online from the United States, of course, um, and, and from Hawaii, but plenty friends down in Australia 
across in the United Kingdom and Canada, but Italy, Germany, Sweden, the Philippines, Aotearoa, sometimes known as New Zealand, Norway, Malta. Hey, hey Malta. Awesome. How is Belina, it? welcome. Yeah, India and uh, Belize. So All right. great, great global representation. Yeah, happy to have you with us. Yeah, thanks for thanks for being deep sea travelers with us. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is a large urchin. Or no, that's uh, another one of those pupal anemone. anemones. Never mind. Anemone. I can tell when things are pointy. Is it a lipanema? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to sing again. I just want to sing again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No apologies needed. <laughs> Right, the bubble, the bubble was the Corallomorpharian, but the Lipanema is mm. an anemone. Oh, it is. Okay. Sorry, we get our butts on a rock here. That's a good place for. That's a good place for an ROV butt. Oh, nice. Yeah, Isn't that it? does look like it. makes it <laughs> unstable. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It seems something uh, might be going on here related to a rock in a hard place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> right. No apologies. Okay, there, Virginia's yeah. looking at me like she's going to throw me off the ship later. <laughs> I would never. <laughs> We would just do it. We would never look at you like we were going to do it. <laughs> oh, the love that grows on a ship out at sea. Uh, day, what, what day is this? <laughs> exactly. What day is this? 19? Mm. Well, it's still sure. Tuesday for us, but our computers say that it's Wednesday. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, computer. Oh, no. Time travel is computer. Oh, you got too much back together. What do you think, Amber? You want light on or off? <sighs> this is light off. Yeah, it's on again. You want it light on? Yeah, let's just see what it looks like. Light on. Too much fast. Yeah. Oh, who just messaged me? Yeah, off, please. Off? Yeah. It's more dramatic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, Robert, we are back in the water at 11 tomorrow morning. Uh, okay. Also, question for off-bottom time. Do you want to set that around 10.30 tonight? I think Megan said 10.45. 10.45? Okay, I missed that. Thanks. All right. We're moving now. Just take a minute. All right. I got to come back this way anyway. <clears throat> Well, aloha mai kakoa, o mihina lani kawaleri ko e noa no o ahu mai ao. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mahina. We're out in Papahanao Mokoakea Marine National Monument, day 19 on board Nautilus, and uh, you know, feeling great, excited. They filled up the Oreo snack box before, so we all grabbed some on our way up. <laughs> but you know what? I, I'm realizing the longer we stay out here, the quicker they go. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, oh, I, yeah. I consider my fellow friends and neighbors on board. So oh, yeah, right. I do. <laughs> I do. Come on. I love you guys. The cookie queen over here. The cookie queen over here. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I will always make sure there's, you know, some for everyone. Mm. But... Uh, That's function. not what she said when she uh, pushed me out of the way to get through the last cookie on the tray <laughs> yeah. the other day. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dan went tumbling. Get out of the way. Uh, <laughs> not everyone oh, is as, as, as considerate as you. <laughs> <laughs> so. uh, they they have, oh, sorry. I was going to say, that's just why I stand by and just watch from afar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't brought out Fruit Loops again. <laughs> That's probably there's a good there's thing. No more fruit loops. Yeah, no yeah. more Fruit Loops, or there's they're no like. Fruit loops. I, I looked and I asked. <laughs> oh, oh. 
Zach noticed something about oh. the Italian salad dressing, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Oh. So, so, <laughs> the cook has a hidden stash of Italian <laughs> dressing really? somewhere. Oh, yeah. Oh. I, I saw it, and he looked at me.